is Pipeline Audio, and I want to talk a little bit about aliasing. And pardon the noise in the background, there's uh, bands practicing here right now. During the development of Reaper, and especially when talking with Scott Stilwell and Robo, issues about aliasing would come up from time to time, but aside from intentionally pathological audio files, I never really worried about it. It never seemed to be something that was very important to me, at least. The other day I was watching a review of a guitar amp modeling VST plugin, and the guy kept talking about aliasing, and the sound I heard I thought was more what I'm used to hearing with tube amps, that little ghosting noise they make from time to time, but I decided to dig deeper and try my own experiments. So the first thing I did was uh, not a unison bend, but one of those kind of double stop bends and bending one string and not the other, and I was able to get that ghosting noise over and over again. So here's the original file. And here's what I got back out of different amp sims. So let's be sure, this is not just a problem with any single amplifier simulator, it seems to happen on all of them. And not just amplifiers, but compressor plugins as well. So the next thing I did was to run a sine sweep up to 10k. You can make this happen at lower frequencies as well, but this is uh, exaggerated for demonstration purposes. So here's the uh, basic sweep. And now let's run it through some different amp sims. And here's a compressor. So there's a lot of you out there probably saying, hey, uh, that's what oversampling's for. So here's a compressor with oversampling on. Now I remember years ago Dan Lavery speaking about nonlinear operations and that uh, compression, limiting, uh, things like that generate lots of high frequency artifacts and that you wouldn't really be able to get rid of them by anti-aliasing filtering because the damage was already done. And oversampling might not be the solution for this because um, you would need so many times oversampling you'd probably bring any computer to its knees. So here's another compressor, and I'm going to save the listener some tedium by um, starting a little bit higher up in the frequency range. So here's two times oversampling. Here's four times oversampling. And here's uh, 64 times oversampling. One objection uh, you might be thinking about is, um, well, hey, the guitars just don't go that high anyway. Um, but let me play the original test file I used, and you can see its output on Shope.
So what's the takeaway from this? Um, like I like to say, don't get jacked. You know, let's look at the, does it matter? You know, um, so is it real and demonstrable? I'd say yes. Is it audible? Yeah. Will you hear it in real world use? I'm not entirely positive it's going to be that much of an issue. Um, we could definitely make it happen on a pathological file. Um, would it stop me from using these tools in real life? Not at all. Um, I think if this aliasing is a problem, I'd like to look more into it and do something about it. I've seen some suggestions already, but um, it's not going to make me stop using the tools that we're using now. I, I really like them. They're very convenient. They sound good for the most part, and I'm sure this will be dealt with. So this is Pipeline Audio with some food for thought, I guess, and I will see you next time.